There are many immediate threats which are obvious. You just have to look at the newspapers and the television channels to understand that conflicts, lack of food, droughts and natural disasters, they are, these are all upon us. But I actually think there's a deeper systemic threat and it has to do with the way that people are gathered together to communicate with each other. Inequality is the greatest threat we have at the moment, and by inequality I'm talking about social inequality, the gap between the rich and the poor. In those very unequal societies, you get into increased status competition. Life becomes a matter of status seeking and so on. Status differences become more important. And of course, how we show our status uh, is through money, how we spend money and, uh, you know, our clothes and car and house and all the rest of it. We have an economy that is collapsing around us and this collapse will continue until we deal with the fundamental unsustainability of the way in which we're doing business, the way in which we're living our lives. I think really we are locked into um, a process of consumerism at a time when we're becoming aware of the uh, enormous environmental threats to, to growth. And this is, if you will, the, the longer running threat. The proximate threat is climate change. We're surpassing, I think, the, uh, the capacity of the, uh, the, the Earth's life support system. We're anticipating a doubling in the urban population between now and about 2050. So we're going to grow from about 3.6 billion urban dwellers to about 6.3. Yeah, we live on a finite planet. We live in a new geologic era called the Anthropocene, where human activities are so prevalent that they're beginning to affect our, uh, our life support system. We have until perhaps 2017 to put in place climate protection, or we will lock in as much as six degrees Celsius warming. That's not survivable, not by species as we know them. I think we're running out of uh, the access to clean water for everybody. We are running out of uh, access to energy, housing material, shelter. I think a big threat is our education system. Although more people are going to school and more people are going to school longer um, and there's a lot more information out there, a lot of it, especially on the internet, is not credible. Underlying all these uh, symptoms, there is a root cause. The idea that society should be completely regulated by market forces and profit maximization. So unless we change this pattern of uh, development, we cannot address all these global threats. The solution, I think, is to recognize uh, what actually does contribute to quality of life for people, including our material assets, the economy, and all of the things that it produces, but also our social assets, all of the interactions between people, our friends, our family, our institutions, our um, you know, this is a, a really a, a primary contributor to people's quality of life, is their social interactions. For many people, social contact becomes an ordeal where there's great inequality, you know. Are they going to think I'm stupid or I might make a fool of myself in front of them, all those sort of uh, worries. It, it leads to those feelings of doubts about self-confidence and um, self-esteem and so on, because in those unequal societies, people are more worried about how they're seen and judged. We can try to ensure that those who have insufficient um, material things, you know, in, insufficient living standards, um, do better and we need to make sure that um, we constrain or restrict incomes at the top, the capture of wealth by the already very rich. The problem however is that those who want to change the world don't have enough political muscles to make these changes. So uh, it's both uh, an economic but also psychosocial uh, change that we need to promote. What we have to do is re rearrange our thinking that this has got to be a different way to have dialogue with people. And you can see it already. You know, people are talking to each other in ways that they could never have done a few years ago. Uh, and in a way, that is a matter of exchanging the phony alien relationships where I try and make a good impression on you by uh, the way I, I'm dressed and the electronic gadgetry I have and whether I've got the latest phone and stuff to relationships based on real personal knowledge and interaction. 
So you can separate them as, well, we have an economic problem, we have a climate problem, the solutions are the same, and ultimately the causes are the same. It is this fundamental unsustainability of the way in which we have been doing business. A much better future is possible, and we have examples of it starting to emerge in communities, in companies, in countries. We just need to take the best of what is already working and take it to scale.